We've cooked some chickens. We've minced our mutton. We've sliced our sabzi. We've even fried some fruits. Now it's time to bring the knife down on the competition. It's elimination time on Forestan. Namaskar, Adabarze, and good evening, foodies. We began our quest for the ruler of Foodistan with our team challenges. India and Pakistan formed teams, and each chef gained three points if their particular team won. We followed those with appetizing contests with our individual cook-offs, one-on-one -one battles between Indian and Pakistani chefs that involved a game changer. One particular ingredient that had to be a part of two of the three dishes they cooked. Points they earned in this round will now decide who is closer to victory and who is out of contention. So let's begin this crucial episode with one last look at all 16 of our brilliant chefs who fought for their country's honour on Foodistan. Representing Pakistan, Chef Khurshid Amina Agha, also known as Poppy. Pyar se hamine Karachi ki razia pukarte hain. Chef Mohammed Speedy Naeem. Chef Akhtar Rahman from Mardan. The hero of Hunza, Noor Khan. Don of Dampukht, Chef Mohammed Ikram. Our Shagird Chef, Mohammed Saqib. The football fiend, Chef Amir Iqbal Ali. And finally, the chef with panache, Chef Mahmood Akhtar. And our chefs from India. The barb of innovation, Chef Manish Mehrotra. The soft-spoken bully, Chef Madhumita Mohanta. Biker dude, Chef Girish Krishnan. Khandani Khansama and Shire, Merajul Haq. The walking food encyclopedia, Chef Karan Suri. Chef Nimish Brando Bhatia. Knife man, Chef Rajiv Arora. And the chef with the nose for business, Chef Sunil Chauhan. These master chefs have given us hours of mouth-watering entertainment. We've seen passion, delectable creations, masterly innovations, and of course, not to mention, great reactions from the judges. You've got textures, a crunch, you've got softness. I absolutely love it. But where there's an arm, there's bound to be a good glee. And our contestants had their share of slip-ups, mistakes, and dishes that left the judges unimpressed. I mean, you should ultimately always be a rock star, but your kaleji shouldn't taste like a rock. Our three judges may be from three different countries. One from India, one from Pakistan, one from England. But their exposure to cuisine is global, making them the perfect choice for a grand battle like Foodistan. Let's welcome our judges. Chef and TV presenter from England, Marilise Parker. Good evening. Good evening, Marilise. Food critic and senior journalist, Veer Sangvi. Hi, Ira. Hi, Veer. And finally, actress and gourmet, the lovely Sonia Jahan. Salam, namaste. On Foodistan, we have seen the best of Indian and Pakistani cuisine. But what we've also seen is that whilst on the one hand, traditional cooking techniques have been used, on the other, we notice a more contemporary style. A style that believes cuisine, like culture, also evolves. Now, this makes Foodistan an extremely tough competition to judge. Yeah, I mean, I think that there's a point where innovation is good. However, this is supposed to show Pakistani cuisine and Indian cuisine. So there's a point at which it can be taken too far. And I think possibly we've seen that on a few recipes. But in fact, I would say on both sides, we've had a few ingredients and a few ways of presenting things on the Pakistani side, as well as the Indian side. And funnily enough, there's been the odd recipe. I think that one of my favorite recipes of the whole series so far was done by Manish, who everybody has said is, is like the innovator. And it was his mean curry, which was an incredibly traditional dish. So I, I, I think it just has to make sure that the ingredients and the flavors aren't so removed from, from the, the planet of Foodistan um, that it makes it too impossible to judge and you know, it just takes it too far. What we told us about the is a traditional Indian and Pakistani food. I'm not against winner or loser. I'm just parallel the line. It has to be Indian and Pakistani. But I would say that they were no more fusion than you were. I'm actually okay with fusion. But I think if your main ingredient and your main flavor is not Indian, then there's a problem. I docked Manish Mehrotra two points because he did a tofu dish. It was a brilliant dish, but I didn't think it was Indian. 
So you're open to innovation, but within the context of, of what's available your in India and Pakistan. Your flavors must be authentic Indian Pakistani flavors. Right. Is that all clear? Where the flavors are authentic, India and Pakistan ke flavors are. Decide, do what you want, no problem. Unfortunately, Look, I think this is a great platform for, for everyone to, to show what they can create as well, keeping in mind the tastes of this part of the world. And I think that's what this show is about. Time to end the chat and start the chop. That is, to find out who's staying to cook another day and whose goose is already cooked. Now, if you've been following our solo cook-offs, remember, it's not about who won or lost them. It's all about how many points they have in their larder. And tonight, eight chefs, four from India and four from Pakistan, will realize they don't have enough. They will be the ones who will walk out of this arena, dreams shattered, missions unaccomplished. So let's begin. First, Chef Mohammad Naeem. Now, you got off on the wrong foot uh, in the team challenge because the Murgesh Shalimar you did did not impress the judges. But you overcame your disappointment and rode back in the individual cook-off where your Dhuwa Gosht was a red-hot favourite with the judges. For that performance, you are at the top of Pakistan with 22.5 points. You will cook another day on Foodistan. Congratulations, sir. Bad, bad, Mubarak. NDTV's Cricket app. Android and iPhone. Faster scorecard. Special analysis. And much more. Download free. NDTV.com slash apps.